What's up guys? Welcome back to this Django REST framework tutorial series. So last video we made some views, we wired up the URLs, and we made some requests and got responses back from our API. So if you didn't watch that video, I suggest you do that first and then come back to this video. As a reminder, you can get the code from all the videos in this series at my GitHub. This will be linked in the description. So in this video, we're going to dive deeper into really the core of the Django REST framework. So last video, we used HTTP request to make requests to our API. So the REST framework has a request object that extends that regular HTTP request. And this will provide us with more flexible request parsing. So the core functionality of this object is the request.data attribute, which is similar to the request.post. We also have response objects. So the REST framework also introduces a response object, which is a type of template response. So this takes unrendered content and uses content negotiation to determine the correct type to return to the client. For example, JSON. And we also have status codes, like we saw last video. One of these is the 400 status code, which is a bad request, or a 404, which is a not found. And in this tutorial, we're going to take a deeper look at that and also add some error handling to our API. And then the final thing that we saw last video, and that we'll look more into this video, are the API views. So there are two wrappers that we can use to write API views that the REST framework provides us with. And all these wrappers do are add some functionality to making sure that we rec receive request instances in our view and adding context to the response objects. And additionally, they allow us to provide some new behaviors such as a 405 method not allowed error, and it will also handle any parsing errors or parsing exceptions that we get when we're trying to handle uh, data that is incorrect. So that was a lot of talking. Let's dive into the code and put some of these ideas to action. So back in our views.py, we're going to come up here to the post list. And what we're going to do is remove this, and we're going to look at the function-based view. So we're going to say at API underscore view. And we also need to import that. So we're going to come up here and we're going to get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. And we're going to import the API oops, underscore view. So we also need to change this method definition a little bit. So we have def post list, which is fine. Also up here, this takes in a couple things. So we need to pass the get and the post up here. So we're going to just say simply get and post. Oops, post. Perfect. So we still have our function. We have def post list, pass the request. And here, as you recall, we are listing all of our posts or creating a new post with the get and post respectively. So we have posts equals post objects at all. That's good. This is good. And down here, this is what we're going to change. So instead of returning a JSON response, we're simply going to return a response. And we're going to pass in the data. And this will provide us with some error handling. And as you can see, we need to import this as well. So that is from the REST framework dot response. So we actually don't need this JSON parser anymore. So I'm going to remove this and say from rest framework dot response import response. There we go. Now that's good. And then we'll jump down here. Elif request dot method equals post. So we're trying to create a new blog post. We don't need our data object anymore because we're not parsing that. 
So let's get rid of that. We'll say serializer equals post serializer data equals request dot data and simply pass it in there. And then if serializer dot is valid, save it and return not a JSON response, but simply a response. Here we're going to say serializer dot data. We're going to say status is equal to status dot HTTP underscore 201 underscore created. And we need to import that as well. That will be from just REST framework. So let's copy this. And down below here, we'll say from REST framework import status. And now this should be good, perfect. And then we also have to change this JSON response to response. And inside of here, again, this is called when there is an error. So we will say serializer dot errors. And then the status will be equal to status dot HTTP and not 201 created, but 400. And then this is a bad underscore request. And I just want to point out all of the information I'm getting can be found in this API guide. So for example, renderers, you can see if you scroll down a little bit, we're using the at API view. So we have something like this. And then we also have the requests, which are up here. And also the status codes, you can find them in here too. So you see all of our successful ones, redirection, which we will add, errors, so this is how I know 404 not found or a 400 bad request. All these can be found in here. All right, so that was a basic refractor of this post list method. And again, like I mentioned before, this instance view is a improvement over what we previously had. It's more concise and we're also using named status codes like such so when we make, so when we get a response back, the meaning is a little more obvious and we can understand that better. And then we have to do the same thing for the post detail. So we're going to change this to at API underscore view. We're going to pass in the method. So we have a get, we have a put, and we have a delete. Now up here, this is fine. We still have the try and accept. Okay, so down here, we don't want the HTTP response. We simply want response. And then in here, we're going to say status is equal to status dot. And this would be a does not exist. So that is a 404 not found error. So HTTP underscore 404 underscore not found. And then for the get, this is good. And again, we want to return a response. And we can keep this because this is the same. We're still passing in the data. LF request.method equals put. Now we don't need this line. We can delete that. Serializer equals put post serializer, pass in the post, and now we pass in request.data. If it's valid, save it and return the response with the data. If it's not valid, return the errors. So return the response, serializers, oops, serializer dot errors, and a status equals status dot HTTP, and this will be a 400 bad request. 
and then finally delete post that delete and return a response of 204 so this is good but we need to rename this to how we have been doing it so status dot HTTP and we want 204 so that has not been created yet so we'll have to do that okay there we go so these should all be good now we refractored all of these so next we're going to add the format keyword so we can handle different formats uh, for the request so up here we have def post list I'm going to add next to the request I'm going to add format equals none and I'm going to add the same thing down here for post detail I'm going to say format equals none and then we're also going to have to update our urls.py so in the post app in that post app folder this urls.py so we're gonna have to import a couple of things in here so we're going to say from rest framework dot url patterns import format underscore suffix underscore patterns and then down below here we can say url patterns equal format suffix patterns and pass in our url patterns okay so let's test all this out and see if it still works so I'm going to jump into my terminal here. I'm going to run the server with python manage.py run server. Make sure everything works. Okay, so we're getting an error. Let's see. Line three, Django.view. So we can't import this API view. Let's go check that out. So that's because we don't want Django.views. We want from Rust framework dot decorators okay there we go now that should work okay perfect so our server is now running so we're not going to go and look at that in a browser what we're going to do instead is open up a new terminal window like we did last time and in here we're going to make some requests so let's go to our url to test this out so we're going to say http and then we want the URL, so let's copy this, paste that here, and we want to go to slash posts. So let's enter there and see what we get. Okay, perfect. So we're getting the same stuff as last time. It's a status of 200, okay. And we can control what format we get. Remember, we added, oops, so we added this format tag here so if we say we do that and we say accept application slash json we get it back in json like we have been getting but if we say accept text slash html we get HTML back. Okay, so that's all for this video. And in the next video, we're going to, again, refractor our views into class-based views. And we'll see how we can greatly reduce the amount of code that we need to write. So if you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one.